Hi, my name is Jesse Hogg and I'm a Tribal Youth Intern with the United States Fish and Wildlife Service this summer. I'm working on the Eastern Klamath Study Area Project where I have been setting and checking hair snares to monitor fisher activity. Some of the other agencies on this project are the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, Sierra Pacific Industries, North Carolina State University, Michigan California Timber Company, and Fruit Grower Supply Company. The key aspect of these hair snares is that they are a non-invasive method for monitoring fisher activity. So come with me today as we check some hair snares. This summer, I set and checked 42 hair snares in the Beaver Creek watershed, which is part of a 500 square kilometer eastern Klamath study area in Northern California and Southern Oregon. These hair snare boxes are designed to collect samples of hair and tracks of small carnivores. These hair snares were set in mid-September and were operational for four to six weeks, depending on bear damage and other factors that could cause the hair snares to become inoperable. During this time period, each hair snare box was checked and rebated once a week. If a box was found damaged or inoperable, it was repaired and placed out for an additional week. But before we can set out these hair snares, we must first build our hair snare boxes. I'm going to demonstrate how a hair snare box is constructed and how it works. First you start with a sheet of coroplast, which is corrugated plastic. It's much like cardboard, but it is made out of plastic and it is very weather resistant. This is a hair snare box, which has been constructed out of coroplast. As you can see, it is open on one end, and it has a screen on the other. This is a tra track plate which is then placed inside of the hair snare. It has contact paper on this side which is tacky on one side. And it has printer toner dusted on this side, like so. Bait will then be placed on the back side. As an animal walks in to retrieve the bait, it will step here and leave an impression here. The bait is always placed towards the back of the trap. Here we have a wooden stake with a glue strip attached to it. These wooden stakes act as a barrier that an animal must go under in order to reach the bait at the back. After the glue strip and track plate have both been placed inside of the box, the trap is then active. Now that we have built our hair snare boxes, it is time to set them out in our study area. Hair snare boxes are most effective when placed in riparian areas because there is a higher level of animal activity near creeks and waterways. The hair snare boxes are typically placed against rocks or trees for extra support and cover, and a little bit of natural material helps the boxes blend in with their surroundings. What we have here is a track plate for the hair snare boxes. As you can see, we have a good sample of tracks. I'm going to pull this contact paper off of the track plate and put it in a protective covering. I'm then going to record on my genetic survey form that these tracks came from this location at this time and date. What we have here is a wooden stake with a glue strip attached to the bottom. Three of these wooden stakes act as a barrier that an animal must pass under in order to get to the bait. As an animal passes under, the glue strip makes contact with the back of the animal. Hair samples are then left behind as you can see. After a hair sample has been left, we can pull it out, take the glue strip off of the stake, and place it in a vial like this to be sent off for genetic analysis. Genetic analysis allows us to extract DNA from the hair follicle, and that DNA allows us to determine species, sex, and even identify unique individuals within a fisher population. With this information, we can learn more about fisher occurrence and distribution, 
their relative abundance and population estimates, and we can even track fisher population trends over time. Non-invasive techniques such as hair snares, coupled with DNA identification, allow researchers and land managers to better understand the ecology of this elusive forest carnivore. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. Today I shared with you some of what I have been doing this summer as a tribal youth intern working for U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service on the Eastern Climate Study Area project in Siskiyou County and also presented some background information on the project itself. If you would like to learn more about this project and other conservation projects the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is working on, please contact the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service at the address at the end of this video. Thanks for watching and thanks for your interest in conservation.